Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I am Bob, and I'm exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. I'm joined by my other partner, Mike, who's going to ask the uh, keto question today. And we're, our guest is a second time guest. He's actually Dr. Mark Kukazella, and we'll let him explain who he is, but we're going to cover plantar fasciitis or fasciosis, depending on your perspective, and also keto, the keto diet. So enjoy. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Mark Kukazella. Am I saying that correct? You are, Bob. That's correct. All right. Um, we're going to start off with a, we, we, we're essentially going to go over two topics today, uh, plantar fasciitis and keto. Um, um, plantar fasciitis, I want to get into this because I know you own a store, a shoe store, and you also wrote a book called Run for Your Life. Mike, want to show yours? <laughs> we got two copies here. But Brad had nice, read it. Thank you for reading funny. the book. Yeah, it's funny. Brad had read it to my partner, our other partner, and he actually said, you know, even non-runners sh uh, should read this. I mean, there's so much information in there that's good for non-runners too. So... <laughs> Could you give us a little bit of backstory on uh, your background as a doctor and owner of a shoe store? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for having me on the show again. And um, that's first time I've had those two disparate topics in one. <laughs> Maybe we'll connect them. Maybe there a keto go. diet can, can cure plantar fasciosis. It just, uh, but it probably does have some effect, but we could chat about that. You know, uh, bring I agree. Your body weight down I agree. And bring your inflammation down. So, um, but yeah, a little of my background, I'm, I'm a doctor, worked for West Virginia University. I'm a professor here in the School of Medicine, spent 29 years in the Air Force as a flight surgeon, so dealt more with well and active people in, those, in that part of my career. Now I'm dealing um, with people in a state that has the highest obesity and diabetes rate. Most of my work now in medicine is revolved around reversing diabetes, you know, mostly through nutritional oh, interventions. Sure. And we're talking about type 2 diabetes you know, which is a nutritional issue of carbohydrate intolerance, you know, that's the root of that problem. Right. But I've been a runner my whole life, uh, you know, was probably a hyperactive kid before we just medicated children. <laughs> you know, we went out and just, yeah, just played yeah. for hours and hours and hours out, outside. And that's, I was just constantly moving and was always getting in trouble and, you know, was just constantly busy and, and they, decided to line me up for races and I did pretty well, <laughs> you know, once they sure. put a bib on me, um, <laughs> not just playing tag in the neighborhood and uh, went on to run at university of Virginia oh, cool. and then kept running after that, but was always hurt. I think like all runners in the eighties, I'm 55 now. I mean, that was like old school. We just ran till we broke and then right. tried, uh, we didn't have massage guns that are <laughs> yeah. the fancy yeah. stuff, but yeah, we just broke ourselves and, you know, rinse and repeat. And, um, you know, I ended up having foot surgery about 20, a little over 20 years ago now, you know, for hallux valgus and hallux rigidus, which is, uh, you know, a joint issue with the large toe, but had suffered sure. also with plantar fasciitis, fasciosis would probably be a more accurate term along the way. Um, and, and when I had my own surgery for my feet, you know, like a, as a doc, you know, you're always kind of skeptic about everything you're told that's absolutely true. So I kind of started rereading about biomechanics, footwear, you know, why do you get these problems? <laughs> and, you know, that was before minimalism or five fingers and started to hack shoes apart, you know, play more with minimal shoes or widening toe boxes, uh, issues like that. But, you know, really at, at that point, tried to understand the reasons why people get plantar fasciosis. I mean, there's a million treatments for it because, you know, there's, we, we haven't hit the root causes of it. You know, you keep treating the symptoms, but I think we've yet to figure out you know, all the root causes. And that's why my store exists. It's kind of a mini sports med clinic. You know, everyone who walks in with plantar fasciosis has a different issue, right? That's why we do, you know, you guys are PTs. You do this thing called a physical exam <laughs> and a history, sure. you know, and 99% and of the issues come out with those two things together. And then we'll work on remedies to try to restructure, restrengthen the foot, you know, to ultimately get them out of it. You sure. know, so in a year when they walk back, you know, that they don't have it. And that's prevention. It's key too. That's why we want children in better footwear. So they develop normal, strong feet, and then they, they won't need us later. 
so that's a little little of that. The store is just a labor of love. Um, small community store, independently owned. You know, we're not part of a chain or anything, and host races. Well, both Brad and I have uh, uh, bought some of uh, your store and a really good customer service. I mean, awesome. yeah, I think you guys did a Zoom fitting or something. One of my yeah, that was Brad. Said, right. Nice, nice. Hope hope we did well. Oh, it did fantastic. I gave you service, right? Yeah. Yes. Old school customer yeah. service. Yeah. So when somebody comes in with a full blown case of plantar fasciitis, uh, will you recommend an art support for a while or not? Well, again, it, it depends. So some people, their feet are so weak and so dysfunctional, their arches are collapsed, you know, kind of failing arches, not falling arches. Their intrinsic muscles are weak. You know, their big toe is bent in at a 30 degree angle. Yeah, so they do need a bit of support while they correct that causative factor well, or well, factors. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just like any other joint extremity, right? You're going to support for protection, pain relief, and then wean support and add strength. And, and I mean, I don't think that's too far out there to say that that's how we should address the feet. But unfortunately, a lot of people come into my store and they say, well, you need this rigid arch support for life. And it's like, well, what other part like think say you had some neck pain and we put a neck brace on you and oh, thank you it feels a little better you right. know, we wouldn't just keep that on you for the rest of your life and things will get weaker and it all depends on the goals too bob you know if you're 85 years old and just want to walk to the mailbox and and your foot is really beyond repair <laughs> you know we see that all sure. the time this is what's beyond repair we'll do whatever we can to get them walking without pain because the walking is what will help them you know, with all their other health issues, plus sure. their mind, right? They'd like to walk and if it's, it sucks right. to, to hurt with every step. Yeah, So exactly. it, it all, all depends. At, at eight year old, you know, that kid, we want to totally retrain their feet or they're going to be in for a lifetime of trouble. So that kid, we want to like take a lot of time with and get them back to, to normal. Uh, uh, could you talk about how uh, the calf muscles can also affect plantar fasciitis? Yeah, I think tightness of the calf muscle is probably one of the most important things to assess. So, you know, I'll go through with people, you know, can they stand on one foot? You know, that stability, you know, all the, how are those foot muscles working to support the ankle, which tends to drive the knee and drive the hip? You know, what's going on at the feet? And then you look at ankle mobility. Can they get into a deep squat? You know, can they kind of get asked to grasp? And if they can't, you know, usually it's a calf mobility and then we do a couple different assessments to say, okay, is it hip or is it calf? But for most people, it's tight calves and because it works as a windlass. So if your if you're calf Achilles complex, gastroxoleus complex, you know, for those listening, not medical, that's those two big calf muscles that connect to that big spring called the Achilles tendon. If that's really tight and you're going through the gait cycle, toe off, that's going to affect the way your foot responds to the ground. So you're going to kind of you're going to be heel up too soon. So you're going to be putting stress on that plantar fascia before it's really designed to take that stress. So working on calf mobility, you know, rolling the calf, trying to spend some time in a deep squat. You know, I, I love the, you know, kind of the uh, uh, knees over toe exercise. Yeah, very good. You know, so, yeah, so you just put, you, yeah, it's a wonderful exercise. Yeah. You know, it's more of a static exercise, but usually people need to start with a stool and just can they kind of sink down right. and just bring that calf up to the back of their thigh? But that's a wonderful, safe exercise. Yep. You know, the only caveat would be if someone's got severe osteoarthritis of the knee, you know, like clear that before you have them attempt to get into these positions. Just you don't want to put forces in the knee that, you know, that are going to cause them pain. It's all gradual progression. Can you talk about bunions and how they might affect uh, plantar fasciitis, like a, a misaligned big toe? Yeah. So if you look at the way the foot works, right? So if we think of like, uh, think of the picture, maybe your mom saved, not the picture, the footprint of your, your foot when you came out of your mom's right. womb, right? Like the toes, the foot is widest at the tips of the toes, you know, and that tripod foot, tip of the big toe, heel, lateral side of the foot that works like a magical spring right and and an arch is supported by the ends you know your your structure is good right you can your foot can work like a spring 
But as soon as you take that big toe and torsion it in, right, it's like that three-legged stool, you just cut off one end and now the foot just collapses or you've got to roll to the outside. So you've got to work around it somehow. You, you can't kind of run through the big toe anymore. So you've lost that key feature of the arch and then the arch collapses, not from necessarily weak arch muscles at that, at, you know, in that case, it's more the big toe is bent in, right. which just collapses the foot. You know, that holds the whole arch structure together, especially when that big toe dorsiflexes. That creates what's called that magic windlass. So when if you're listening now and you were to pull your big toe up, your foot makes an arch, right? So even if you've been told you have flat feet, right? Just go down and pull your big toe up. Your foot makes an arch as long as your big toe can bend up. So yeah, we're just trying to restructure things back to normal. The foot's like perfect you know, human anatomical design to do what, you know, we're meant to do, which is walk and run, you know, it's, a, and it's amazingly complicated. That's why it's hard to treat one specific thing. You know, there's 26 right. bones, three joints, a hundred muscles, <laughs> joints move in two to three planes. You know, there's like infinity degrees of movement within the foot. So we want the whole thing like restoring normal, which is not, you know, a, a 10 seconds steroid injection <laughs> into right. the thing that hurts do you recommend so I hope that makes sense of uh, anti-inflammatories at all um oh gosh oh um, other than yeah so there's itises and osises and you guys right. have talked about this on your show before with tendinopathies so if something is truly you know inflamed right you just roll that ankle and it hurts so bad you can't even move and you just want to be out of pain you know or you have some type of uh pathologic arthritis, like a rheumatoid and autoimmune arthritis, sure. you have active inflammation. Um, yes, maybe there's some role for non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. They're going to be all of your profens, ibuprofen. But when it comes to chronic degenerative tissue changes, no, we, we don't want those because having that anti-inflammatory actually inhibits the body's reparative processes. So, and most plantar fascia are not itises, right? They just didn't get that yesterday, you know, unless right. they were like on a, you know, hard trail run and they were fine and they just like acutely traumatized it. But, but otherwise they're osis, meaning they're chronic degenerative, you know, disorders, not acute inflammation, like an infection or That's a, a trauma. Really, a really important distinction. I mean, I think people treat it as inflammation and they should be treating it as a, like is it, things have um, deteriorated. It's degeneration. Yeah. yeah, the tissue is just, you know, chronically traumatized. Plus all the, the medical side effects of these medications, mostly gastrointestinal. Sure. You know, my the sad backstory, the last, my last non-steroidal. So I was running at University of Virginia and I was, I think, a sophomore year. And, you know, just feeling like tired, feeling like crap. Right? I'm like, sure. like, am I training too hard, too little? And. And, uh, you know, we were all hurt. So we were all taking these medications, you know, like you'd get them in the trainer's room, you know, something, a profen, you just come in a bottle, you're just sure. a knucklehead college kid. <laughs> and then one day my roommate looked at me and said, you know, Mark, you don't look too good. And I, I looked about the color of this wall in front of me, which is white. And he calls his dad, who's a pharmacist, you know, college kids don't go to doctors, right? right. <laughs> they go to the trainer's room. Yeah. So he's like, and he, and that's just, he, dad, uh, you know, he tells his dad a few things and his dad asked me a couple questions like are you taking any any medicines I'm like no but they give me this stuff in the trainer's room and I went down to and I was having stomach pains and I didn't really know what that was um, and my hemoglobin was six and my hematocrit was 18 from GI bleed you know gastrointestinal bleed and sure, if you're listening yeah. what that means is I had you know somewhere between a third and a half of my red cell volume still going to track practice. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and then I was like, Oh my God, it took like a, a year to two years to fully refill all those iron stores, you know, from oh. all of that chronic blood loss. So, so just, yeah. So no wonder learn from other people's fatigue. mistake. Don't right. do that. <laughs> do not right. take ibuprofen plus it, kidney issues. You know, it's all kinds of, you name the, they should sure. not be over the counter. Those medications. Sure. Really? Wow. Yeah, I, I believe so. The guy who actually invented them as a German who invented the category meds, you know, later in his career, when he heard they were over the counter, he was just like, no, that's crazy. These medications, these are like powerful 
medications wow, with serious amazing. side effects. And, and you know, I know they, like, well, that ship has sailed. They had trouble with naproxen for a while, right? I mean, they're all, yeah, they're all, all the same. Bad, they're all, all, yeah. Aspirin, same category. Yep. And then like, you know, then they went into the different COX-2s and then you got the tragedy of something called Vioxx, you know, so there's a pathway that can contribute to cardiovascular events. <laughs> so that one got good Lord. You know, billions of dollars of lawsuits later, you know, but um, yeah. So, so again, be careful. Any medicine is an active ingredient. So if you're listening, just anything you put in your yeah. body is an active ingredient. Sure. So you just have to make sure you understand what that is. Um, I, I want to go back to the bunion real quick. Um, so my wife, based upon your book and she began using the toe spreaders and she's got terrible bunions and re they have really made a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Shockingly. So, I mean, uh, they were so bad. I didn't think you would, could, I mean, have you found those to be the most effective way oh. to. Yeah. They're incredible. So that we, we um, have a brand called correct toes. And if yeah. you go to Dr. Ray McClanahan's website, so you could go to, uh, I think his website is Northwest Foot and Ankle. His YouTube channel has all of these exercises on how to correct the big toe deformities. But oh, cool. yeah, a lot of people, they do need the spacers. And I still run with the spacers because my toe still wants to, it's not completely corrected. So just having that toe spacer gets that big toe in the right place. You know, the big toe is kind of captain of the ship. So yeah, any kind of toe spread or yeah. toe spacer. At the end of the day, it feels really good. Stick your toes in these toe spacers and <laughs> put your feet up and yeah uh, 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 fortunately or unfortunately my wife got the kind that you actually can't run with but brad yeah, got brad got yours so he's running with yours now so oh, heck yeah and yeah. if the, and if you if you can't fit your toes in your shoes with your correct toes bob then you need new shoes because that means your shoes are too tight Right. Yeah. Yeah. Your toe my, box. My showing. Yeah. You're, yeah. I, I actually brought my running shoes because I got a bigger oh, toe box. So these are just yeah, ultra. Yeah. You got a pair of ultras. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they're just zeros. And then they just have the Explain white. My toe box. Like the Escalante. Oh, yep. Oh, these yeah, are the Escalante. Yeah, you see how wide the nice. toe box is. Yep. So and it's wonderful. Again, uh, would one of you explain uh, are these shoes? Again, we, we have no heel. I mean, no. Yeah, these these are a zero drop, so they they still have some cushioning, but there's no uh, up to heel no compared to a, right. yeah. So like these I use for road running because of the miles I'm putting on right now, but like the and minimalist shoes the foot. Yeah, um, but they're pretty comfortable. I mean, these are what I am going to with running because all my other shoes are minimalist shoes that I wear for walking right now. But just to get adapted more, I switch to these for runners. Oh yeah, they're wonderful. Some having cushion when you run is a preference. You know, you want to get your foot strong. I wore that exact shoe in the Comrades Ultra Marathon over in South Africa, which is oh. on a road. It's like 58 miles and it, they have an up run and a down run. The year I wore those was the down run. So there's like 17,000 feet of descent. Oh my God. <laughs> road. Yeah. So it's point to point. 7,000 drop, but you know, oh, the, yeah. the, the net drop, right? Because you're climbing, going down. There's like net 10,000 climb, 17,000 oh, drop. So you need some cushion. <laughs> no yeah, joke. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, if you did that, and my feet are not strong enough to do that barefoot, but you right. train barefoot to get your foot strong and then you throw some shoes on if you got to go run down a hill for 60 miles on the hard concrete. Yeah. Well, Dr. Uh, Zala, I mean, if it's okay, we're going to change topics now. Again, I'm going to just mention your book again. Yeah, Mark is fine. Oh, Mark, Run for Your Life and How to Run, Walk, and Move Without Pain or Injury and Achieve a Sense of Well-Being and Joy. And also check out his shoe store. We'll have a link to it. Uh, uh, two River Treads, two isn't rivers, it? TwoRiversTreads.com. Yes, so TwoRiversTreads.com. Awesome. Small local running store. So yeah, support whatever small local businesses you have out there in your community. It's a, you know, that's how the world goes around is yep, these small absolutely. businesses. Absolutely. I agreed hundred percent. What makes it living in America special, right? You got small that's towns right. and small businesses and indie bookstores and, and really good shops. and really good service. So mm -hmm. Dr. Mark, thank you wonderful. so much. Great information. Thank you for the massage. Got two after the last show. I've, 
a friend of mine stole it, so I had to go get another one. Oh, <laughs> because, God. You oh, we, we can send you another one. Not, in a, not a, one. in a negative way, but but yeah, because you loan it to someone who I got this SI issue here. Sure. You know, you loan it, and you, that's the last time you see that massage gun. <laughs> they work. Yeah. We got some yeah. other models. We could send you a different one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have ones with like heat. No, but heck yeah, they, they work. We're, we use cool. them for fascia therapy. Yeah. And thanks for uh, sharing my book and reading it. Yeah. Likewise. We can, we can terrific. Do, uh, terrific. Another follow up on a topic of interest if you've got one later. It's yeah, always fun. absolutely. You're, you're a fountain of knowledge. So, so we'll put everything in Mark's store and website and book information down below if you're uh, watching. If you're on podcast stuff, I guess just look somewhere in description. But we'll see you, Dr. Mark. See you, Mark. All right. Guys, have a great afternoon. Right. Stay warm. Spring's you, coming. Sounds good.